Hello and welcome to this video by me, Chris, of uh, Films by Chris, that's Chris with a K, link in the description. And uh, if you've been following my channel for a while, you will know that uh, I do like to do hardware projects. In fact, I have a second channel that's geared towards hardware, and I love the ESP8266 chips. These are little tiny uh, chips that have Wi-Fi in them. They're like a buck fifty to three bucks, depending on what model you get. And think of it as like, like, like. Well, originally uh, they were being used as Wi-Fi modules for Arduinos, and someone realized that you can actually program and do a lot of stuff with them without the need for the Arduino. So for a few bucks, you can have a Wi-Fi enabled Arduino type board. And um, I use them all over my house for different things. And one of the things I, I use them for is I have water pumps on the side of my house, you know, for my water system. And I've already had one pump go bad because it was running constantly by accident. So I hooked up two of them, one to each pump. And every time they turn on, they hooked my Wi-Fi and they log that they've turned on. And if they run more than a certain number of minutes, originally I did five minutes. I think I've knocked that down to two minutes because they shouldn't be running consistently longer than that. It starts sending me alerts to my phone. Well, uh, and I set it up so I can log into my server because it's all logged on my server and I can do, I can just type in pump and it's going to give me output here of every time the pump in the ground run, which the pump in the ground should not be running very often. As you can see, it runs maybe six to eight times a day and that's to fill up the tank on the side of my house. But then there's a pump in that tank, uh, which is called pump two here, which as you can see runs a lot more. Uh, in fact, it is only 10 a.m. It's already run a lot. In fact, I think it's running more than it should be, which is nice that I have this data here to look at that because there is a bladder tank that when I turn on the water in my house, the bladder tank should run for a little bit and pressurize the house before that pump turns on. But I feel like the pump's turning on almost instantly when I flush my toilet or turn on my sink. And I really should look at that because the reason I had one pump go bad in the ground is because I had a bladder tank go bad and it caused that pump to constantly be running and it cost almost a thousand dollars Actually, sometimes I got a good deal from what I've been told that I co it cost me under a thousand dollars to get that last one replaced. The pumps themselves are six to eight hundred bucks plus labor to have somebody go out there and replace it. So I really should be looking more into this. But I wrote a little script that will. It's a very inefficient script. We're going to look at it. Um, but it's called pump, and it's for the second pump. Although I can easily modify it for the first pump, but uh, pump to graph, and I'm going to run that. And as you'll see, it takes a, a while to run, but it's going to give me like a graph for each day, the usage for that, so I can see if a day is out of whack or not. And there are some days in here that you'll see are, are a little out of whack, and I'll explain that in a moment. But here we have this nice little chart for each day. Going back in history, I have the, the date, uh, the number of times it ran, and a little bar graph, so I can look for ones that are super long or super short and try to figure out why. Um, or if I can see over time it's running more and more and more, uh, there might be a problem. And again, I, this script is very inefficient. I loop through a file multiple times to get these numbers and could definitely, you should be able to run through it and count up the numbers going through the file once. I've done that in the past, but it was just quicker for me and it's, it took, what, 10, 15 seconds for that run. It's not something I'm running often. Um, but I thought we'd just look at that. So I'm gonna go into this, um, this file here and we're just going to have a quick overlook on how I'm doing this. So first thing in here, well first thing is that we have, it's a bash script so we have our shebang line uh, and then my copyright information, this code is up online. We have uh, the a variable for our temp file. Then we have our main file which as you can see at the bottom of the file here is our fun first function that's run. It says welcome, generating data and then it's going to get the dates. And what it's going to do here is going to look at the file where I currently have all the logs for pump2 saved. Then it's going to grep for 20. That's kind of, I just threw that in there. In case there's any error lines, I didn't want that to mess up my files here. So it's looking for lines to have 2-0 in it since all of them should have dates of 2000 something. And then we'll hopefully, I, I must have put that in there because I must have had a, a, a jumbled line in there somewhere that was screwing stuff up. So that's just to verify that at least there's a 20 in that line, hopefully grabbing lines that only have dates in them. Uh, then we're going to cut based on uh, the pipe character and grabbing that first character. So uh, if I was again to run pump, or in this case pump two, you can see what I have. I have a time date stamp here for each time it's run. And then I have the printed out date and time just to make it easier. And again, this isn't a database. I'm just dumping everything into a plain text file. So what we're doing here, the next part of this is grabbing everything on this side of the line. So it's grabbing those date stamps. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and go back into our script here. So it's grabbing that timestamp and then converting it and getting just the date 
in a format of year dash month dash day and dumping that into our temp file which we've already established up here is in our temp directory now after that the rest of it's going to happen in the main function I probably should have put it in another function but here we're going to say we're going to cat out that temp file we're going to sort unique it which is going to give us one line for every date that's in the log again not the most efficient way to do this and then we're going to go through and look at each of those dates one at a time but we're going to get a count by looping through the file we're going to so we're going to take the first date let's say it's January 1st 2017 it's going to go and basically we're going to again I don't know this this <laughs> I'm catting and grepping which is a bad practice so really a better way to do this would be this Get rid of that so that that's a little more efficient um, so we're going to be looking for a line with the date so line is the date that we just grabbed so one date it's going to grab all the lines in our file that have that date and it's going to give us a count then it's going to print the date and the count so if it ran 50 times a day it's going to say January 1st 2017 50 times and then it's going to and it's going to give it three uh, digits in that number. So even if it's fifty, it's going to be zero five zero. If it ran a hundred times, it'd be one zero zero. If it was one time, it would say zero zero one. And that just allows our output to be properly formatted, so it's not staggered. And what I mean by that, oops, uh, is if I ran that art this script again. You're going to see here what I'm talking about. Again, 10 or 15 seconds for it to generate all that data because it's looping through that file multiple times. And again, so we have the date and the count. And the reason if we didn't have this zero here, this would be staggered in, which would throw off our graph. And we want everything up to this point to be the same length up to that semicolon. So that, that's what that's for. We're giving it that three digit because hopefully hopefully my pump isn't running over a thousand times a day that would be bad um, so we're looping through that and then we're going to take that count and we're going to put an equal sign for every number in that account in that count and the dash n here is saying don't put a new line it's going to say put an equal sign no new line loop through and we'll do that if it's 50 times we'll go through it 50 times if it's one time we'll go through it one time and then after all that we say echo and a blank line just to give us a new line and after it's all done it exits so it's a very simple script a very inefficient script and I'm not recommending to do it this way again uh, I had a a uh, years ago my buddy James who you've seen in videos in the past it's been a while um, and we were talking about efficiency of scripting and like writing stuff in bash scripts versus C he's big into C uh, I'm big into bash I know very little C I know just enough to get by with C and um, I, we wrote a script we're like okay let's just loop through something and count something so we decided to grab we found a copy of the Old Testament New King James Bible online and we wanted to count how many times each word happens in there and put them in order and originally I did it like this and it took a little over 10 minutes I think for it to run doing something similar to this um, which he was very surprised it ran that fast doing it this way and then I rewrote it again to where it counts it as it goes through and it only took like a minute and a half so so it could definitely be improved, but 10 to 15 seconds is something I'm going to look at every couple of months just to keep an eye on stuff. This is good enough. Anyway, uh, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description to this script online. And of course, you know, just so you can look over it. Uh, that's it. I just wanted to, I wrote this script and I thought that I would share it with you. Uh, and that's it. You know, there's better ways to make graphs and charts. In fact, there's, I saw a GitHub page that actually will create colored graphs in the shell uh, you know different types of graphs but this is how I did it with my basic knowledge in a few minutes so I do thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video I hope that you uh, visit my website filmsbychris.com that's Chris with the K link in the description also a link to my Patreon page patreon.com forward slash mailx1000 if you want to support me you can also support me through PayPal on my website in the support section I do thank you for watching liking sharing subscribing commenting all that stuff thank you for watching again and I hope that you have a great day.